Welcome to ICA's Research Sales and Marketing Programme 2013. I'm stood in front of one of the fantastic murals of Amsterdam at the Casa 400 Hotel. So, what's RSMP all about? Well, I'm talking to CEO Martin Sirk to find out. It's all about 150 people with marketing problems, marketing challenges and marketing ideas um, from 37 countries and spending three days putting them together with a faculty of industry experts and some top clients and to see what comes out of it. That's what it is really. It's, it's, it's a mixture of stuff thrown together in a pot around a framework but essentially requiring the delegates themselves to do their homework, to do their preparation and to arrive with the burning questions and with the issues that they personally really want to deal with. Uh, and the whole program is designed so that there's plenty of time for them to swap business leads, sit down, spend half an hour talking with somebody about improving their social media or reinventing their brand or whatever it is that, that they're most interested in. So that when they go back to their bosses, because most of the people here are in their late 20s to late 30s, so they've got to get permission from people to come here on this training and they've got to justify why they're spending the money and the time to be here. They will go back not just with theoretical knowledge, but with hopefully with real solutions to some of the concrete issues that they will have prepared before they arrived. And that's what makes this fundamentally different from any other training program that's out there. And I've been wandering around chatting to a few people and they're really excited about the subjects. Mm -hmm. So how do you get those together? Is it just like, is it you know, companies come to you and say, oh, we want to talk about this subject. You've got people in the industry going, have you thought about this? How do you get that program together? <laughs> I wish I could give you a solid answer on that, but it, it, it's complicated. What we do is we look at what really works the previous year. We give it a bit of a twist. Um, but essentially what we're, we're, we're always trying to do is, is create frameworks where other stuff can happen. So it's not really about talking a set series of, of presentations. It's simply about saying, well, okay, are you interested in bidding? Uh, and bidding is one of the core elements that always runs through this. How do we design something to really force people to think constructively about what are they doing at the moment and how can they improve that whole process. So, yeah, you know, it's up to the delegates. That's, that's the key point in this. Uh, and that's why the buzz occurs, I think, is because they know they're not going to be sitting down for hour after hour listening to lectures or motivational speeches. I mean, I, I'm giving a presentation tomorrow morning, just after we do a quick opening uh, ceremony, and they're going to expect me to talk for 40 minutes in a keynote about how to improve their marketing without spending any money. And I'm going to, in the first 15 minutes, for 16 minutes actually, ask each table of eight to become a table of seven experts providing consultancy advice for one person. And each person on there is going to be forced to listen to advice until they hear one idea that they think they can actually implement. Now, over the next three days, we're going to be challenging them to actually spend some time developing that particular problem to get really concrete, solid material to turn that into a project or an improvement to something which may be really important to their business. So that's the philosophy we're trying to get across. And, you know, it's up to the delegates. It's not up to us. Just give us a quick insight into the range of the delegates. We know they're from 37 countries, which in itself mm -hmm. is pretty impressive. Uh, and what, what section of the industry have they come from? Well, the, the, the biggest grouping is the destination um, uh, management, uh, sorry, destination marketing companies, the CVBs, mainly city CVBs, but a sprinkling of nationals. Uh, then the next biggest grouping is the venues, which is mainly convention centers with a sprinkling of hotels. And then there's about a dozen to 15, I think there's about 15 PCOs or PCO DMCs. And then there's some media, some IT, some AV type companies. So there's, there's quite a nice mixture. It's a kind of microcosm of what ICRA is on a real macro scale. And that's nice because, you know, if you've got entrepreneurs, people who work for government, people who work for private public sector partnerships, some people who work for small companies, some who work for big companies, each of them is coming from a, 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 a unique and very distinct business environment. If they can actually share some of their insights, other people can give that a twist that actually will then work totally differently in their, in their environment. So the, the exchange is so much richer than if you get a homogenous group of people who essentially are, you know, if you get a whole bunch of hoteliers together, they exchange information, but they don't step outside the box necessarily. You've really got to force that issue. Here, as long as we recognize the opportunity and we give them the space and push them to do this, there'll be some fantastic friendships built and, uh, and some great business ideas shared. Well, Martin, thank you very much for inviting me along and thanks for talking to me. Ian, it's a pleasure as always.